Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vasco Cardoso. I'm a solutions architect at AWS, and I'm based here in Berlin. I'm really excited about having the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I did bring someone along uh, for this talk, but I promise I'm still following social distancing rules. Uh, he's a customer from this very fake company called Jiggly Eyed Socks Incorporated. Is Mr. Jiggly Eyed Socks Senior, uh, who is going to be taking the part of a customer uh, today. So like most software solutions, as the workload grows, the machine running the software will eventually run out of resources. And one solution to do this is to scale vertically. That means adding additional resources to the machine, such as more memory or more CPU cores. You can also do this with your own Puppet server, but there's a limit of around 4,000 nodes per Puppet master. So how can we scale beyond those 4,000 nodes? Or what can we do if we don't know exactly how many nodes we'll have due to spiky or uneven workloads? Well, the astute among you will have read the title of this talk and just say, well, scale horizontally and add compile masters. But what are compile masters exactly? Compile masters are additional machines that take some of the burden of catalog compilation away from the puppet master, which we'll now refer to as the master of masters. <clears throat> Each compile master is able to handle between one and a half thousand to three thousand additional nodes. So you can pile this on up until you exhaust the capacity of PuppetDB or the console. There are two major steps to installing compile masters. We need both the infrastructure and the configuration. The infrastructure is the machine to run the compile masters, and we'll also need a load balancer. This load balancer is recommended if you want to have more than one compile master and you want the workload to be evenly distributed among them all. And even if you start off with a single compile master, this really sets the groundwork for adding additional ones as your workload grows because you won't have to modify any more configuration. Now, the second step is to actually configure the master of masters so that the new node is correctly classified as a compile master and the communication between the nodes, the compile master, and the master of masters can all be routed correctly. But let's break this down into actual steps. So on the left side, we have setting up the compile master infrastructure. We need to create the load balancer, configure it to allow communication on the correct ports. You have to have a new machine to serve as the compile master. Then you need to configure the load balancer to forward traffic to this new node. Then you need to connect via SSH into the node that is going to be a compile master and install the agent and specifically using the DNS alt names flag because we're going to be using the load balancer. To sign the certificate, we actually have to connect via SSH into the master of masters. It's not possible to do this via the console with the DNS alt names flag. We'll still need to log into the console to pin the compile master nodes to the correct, uh, to the PE master node group and then run Puppet on the compile master and run Puppet on the Master of Masters. But this only sets the groundwork for the actual nodes. So then we need to configure the rest of the Puppet's uh, infrastructure. So we need to configure the agent, run Puppet a bunch of times, and add a bunch of uh, configurations to everything. Now, most of these steps have to be done manually and in the specified order. We'll also need to connect via SSH and via the console and to run Puppet multiple times on multiple machines. Now, manual steps can be subject to the biggest error creator of all, which is people. And it happens. People can make mistakes. Um, so when Jiggly Eyed Socks Incorporated approached me and asked about further optimizing how they could scale their puppet environment, uh, I got to work in making this process as automated as, process, as possible. Now, one thing about me is I do love automation, so this is a very fun project. Now, I'll be using some AWS services to achieve this, and I'll start off with AWS OpsWorks for Puppet Enterprise. Now, this service will launch and provision my Puppet Master server. And after choosing a couple of networking settings and waiting for a couple of minutes, we'll have a fully managed Puppet Enterprise server ready to be used. And this fully managed means that it is automatically patched, updated, and backed up without any interaction. We then need to create the load balancer to the, well, serve as the load balancer and the machine to run our nodes and we can take advantage of a couple of other AWS services. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, Elastic Load Balancing, specifically a network load balancer, and AWS EC2 for, to serve as our nodes. To launch everything, uh, we're going to use CloudFormation. For those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud and allows you to provision compute capacity on AWS. Basically, it's virtual machines in the cloud. 
And CloudFormation is a service that allows you to describe AWS infrastructure as code. So once this is defined, you can just deploy this file that describes everything and know that the end result will be the same no matter how many times you have to do it or in whichever environment. And if we look at our step-by-step -step list, we've already been able to cross a couple of items off, but we still have some ways to go, specifically making the changes to the master of masters configuration through the console. So how can we also automate this? We can take advantage of the Node Classifier Service API, uh, which basically allows us to make changes to the master of masters configuration, but programmatically. Now to use this API, we need to authenticate against the master of masters, which means having the username and password written down somewhere. An alternative would be to use the API from the master of masters itself. But even then we need to connect to it via SSH to run these commands, which will require our, our automated system to have access to the SSH keys. So we're either sharing public credentials or SSH keys. Either options are not ideal. That's where system AWS Systems Manager comes in. It's an AWS service uh, with a functionality that allows you to run commands on a machine, either it be on AWS or even on-prem, without the need for SSH. So looking again at our step-by-step, -step, uh, here we can now cross off everything. We don't have to connect to anything and we can have everything up. What you really need to do is to launch the CloudFormation stack and have everything be done automatically. To look a little bit deeper into each of these servers and how they're configured, we can start off with the load balancer. Because we can dynamically register the targets, in this case our compile masters, we can configure everything right from the start. So forwarding the traffic to the correct ports, using agents, in this case 8140 and 8142. Another feature that we can take advantage of is health checks. So we can perform health checks against the compile masters so that none of the nodes we'll try to connect to will be connecting to an unhealthy target. I mentioned that we're going to be using EC2, uh, an EC2 instance as our new compile master node. <clears throat> and one feature of EC2 is called user data, uh, a mechanism that will run a script. Uh, and whenever you create an OpsWorks for Puppet Enterprise server, the OpsWorks team provides a user data script that will bootstrap your node automatically. So I made a couple of changes there by passing the DNS alt names flag to the installation script, uh, set up signing of the certificate through the before mentioned uh, systems manager, master node to the correct group. So all of this is done automatically and securely. One other component related to the compile master is an auto scaling group. With EC2 auto scaling, we can scale the number of compile masters in and out. And this can be the trigger that you can use. So you can select a metric, for example, the number of nodes that you have, and once it reaches a certain threshold, you get a new compile master server. With this auto scaling group, we can also automatically replace unhealthy compile masters. It takes the health data from the load balancer, and if it's marked as unhealthy, it is replaced. So you won't run into the issue of suddenly your compile master is not working and you have to manually go and replace it. And this close integration with the load balancer is that means that the registration is also automated. So once we add or remove compile masters, they're automatically registered or deregistered from the load balancer, which again ensures that only uh, healthy uh, and well existing compile masters will be receiving the traffic and your nodes will not be attempting to connect to something that just isn't there. The last step that we need to do is to configure the, all of the communication. All of these commands need to be run from the master of masters. So we'll use the SSM uh, systems manager run command to do this. It uses an agent that is installed on the machine, the master of masters to process these commands. So there's no need to share secrets around. Each of the commands is also validated. So we know that the changes were made correctly and we can even automate running the puppet agent on each machine that needs it. All of this solution is using a least privilege model and we're managing our permissions with AWS IAM which is a service to, man, well, manage access and permissions on AWS. As it integrates with all of the services that I mentioned so far, we don't need to pass around credentials and we can be sure that the resources can only perform the exact actions that they need uh, to make all of this work without any additional steps. So Jiggly-Eyed uh, Sox Incorporated now has the benefits of all of this being automated. So they can move away from manual processes that are prone, that can lead to errors, we're able to detect and handle errors as they happen. We can scale and replace a compile master if it fails somehow. 
there's no need to getting up at 4 a.m. to fix that. And because all of this solution is built around CloudFormation, we can replicate it across environments. So you can start off with a test environment, make any changes that you see fit. For example, if you want to add additional configurations to the master of masters, and then you can take that exact same file and move it to the production environment where you know it'll have the exact same effect and the exact same end result. Now, I do have a quick demo to show you. Uh, unfortunately, the whole solution does take a couple of minutes to launch, but I do have something prepared. So this is a server that I prepared earlier with um, three nodes plus the master of masters. Let me just increase this a little bit. So if you look over here, this is a node, this is one of our compile masters. So it's already configured in the correct group and in the correct agents. And we can see that the pool address is the correct one. If we look over here in the PE master group, we can see the two compile master nodes that we have configured. So two and 43. This node here is just a regular node that you would see. So this would be a, a machine that you'd be using. It is added to the agent, PE agent uh, infrastructure. And if we see the configuration, we can see that the master URI is a load balancer. This is a very long uh, domain, which could be customized if you'd prefer. Now, if I bring up a terminal here, I'm going to be running just a just regularly running the agent on these nodes. So this here are my two compile masters. You can, you can already see the, the request coming in. So we have the 1B instance, which is uh, our node, and every five seconds it goes to either of these. So this would allow you to scale pretty much. Uh, I think the limit as of 2015, that was the latest data that I could get, would allow you to have around 30,000 nodes. Um, it might have been improved, but I don't have the latest data. But you can see that the node is able to connect to both compiled masters <clears throat> without any need for human interaction.